This video covers the diagnostic criteria for classical Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, or CEDS. CEDS is rare, affecting 1 in 20,000 to 40,000 people. It is the second most common EDS subtype, with 10 to 15% of all EDS patients having CEDS, anywhere from 70 to 90% of EDS patients are assigned female at birth. The prognosis for classical EDS is generally good as they rarely have a reduced life expectancy resulting from vessel rupture. The quality of life of patients depends on severity, age of diagnosis, comorbidities, and access to treatments. We are going to review the new 2017 diagnostic criteria for CEDS. The formal evaluation and genetic testing are required for a diagnosis which include major and minor criteria. Skin biopsy is mentioned below, but is rarely used as it can only rule out other types of EDS. Major criteria include Stretchy skin Hypermobility and Atrophic scars Hypermobility is determined with the Beaton scale, which is a nine-point scale testing the range of knees, elbows, pinky fingers and whether you can touch the floor with your hands. This scale is covered in detail in another video. The minor criteria include Easy bruising Soft and doughy skin Fragile skin Osteoarthritis and Molluscoid pseudotumus these pseudotumus occur following soft tissue regeneration in Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. These tumus are bluish-gray in color and usually appear on the areas which are traumatized like elbows and knees. Further minor criteria include Subcutaneous spheroids which are small, hard nodules that are calcified fat lobules that have lost blood supply. They are movable under the skin and often found on the skin over the arm and leg bones. Prolapse which is a descending or drooping of organs. Family history and Joint complications like pain, sprains, subluxations and dislocations. Further minor criteria includes Flat feet also known as pulse planus. Hypotonire which is decreased muscle tone. Delayed motor development, tissue fragility, and blepharocalysis, which is chronic swelling of the eyelids. The final minor criteria includes hernia, epicanthal folds, which are eye folds common in young children, people with Down syndrome, and those of Asian descent. Cardiovascular abnormalities such as mitral valve prolapse. Defective wound healing and Pisogenic parpules which is the herniation of fat through the thin fascial layers of the weight-bearing parts of the heel. CEDS comes with some pregnancy risks such as Premature birth Breach birth Tearing of the perineal Cervical insufficiency and Uterine and bladder prolapse with ACOL1AM1 mutation, there is an increased risk for vascular events such as spontaneous dissection or the rupture of arteries. CEDS results from the mutation of col 5 a one and col 5 a 2 genes. These genes provide instructions to make type 5 collagen which strengthens and structures connective tissues. Rarely, COL1AM1 type 1 collagen mutations can cause CEDS. CEDS has dominant inheritance, meaning a child only needs one gene to get CEDS. There is a 50% chance of parsing on CEDS. A skin biopsy can also be used to help support the diagnosis of CEDS. When skin is biopsied, a small piece is taken and looked at under a microscope. In this image you can see what they call collagen flowers in the CEDS biopsies because there is a lot of space between collagen fibers. In the normal biopsy you can see that the collagen fibers are evenly spaced. This is the end of the diagnostic criteria for CEDS, please click the like and subscribe button if you'd like to learn more about Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and other rare conditions.
You can also follow me on Instagram for more regular posts at chronic.care. Thanks for watching. Stay rare.